In this video, I built a welding cart for the Lincoln Power Big 210MP. The whole project took one week to complete, and at the end of the video, I'm going to put some pictures of the whole process. Yeah, so what I'm going to use is these 8 inch uh, solid rubber wheels for the back that I got from Harbor Freight. And these are the 4 inch uh, casters for the front. And this was just some metal that I had. And I measured these tanks. They're either seven or seven and a half inches in diameter. So how I want to build this uh, card is I want to make it where I can put two tanks on the back so that when I use a spool gun, I can just put the other tank on there. So I'm going to make it to where there's enough room to put, the tanks can be at least nine inches in size just to give it a little bit of extra space. So what I'm going to do is start cutting the pieces of metal and then I'll, I'll clean this up after because this metal has been sitting outside for a long time. Yeah, and I'm using a Scotchman cold saw to cut this. And this is two inch square tube that's eighth inch thick and that'll be the bottom of the frame on that. Yeah, I got two of the pieces cut. The other two pieces, I gotta drill a hole in them. And I'm gonna do that first because it's easier for me to hold on to this while it's still longer for the axle to go through for these wheels. And this is just gonna be the back half of the cart where the tanks go. And it's gonna be narrower in the front where the actual welder goes. Yeah, and these rear wheels are rated at 300 pounds a piece, and the front casters, these uh, four inch ones, are rated at 330 pounds. And I already had these, I was considering using them, but I'm not going to use these wheels. Yeah, so now I'm ready to drill the axle uh, hole, and I'm purposely going down a little bit with it and not perfectly in the center. That gives me more room where I can adjust the bracket for the front casters to get it ex set exactly level. It'll be real close if I put it in the center where I, and I won't be able to do nothing there. Yeah, so I have all the pieces for the back cut and the holes drilled for the axles to go through. And since these tanks are only 150 cubic feet, they're easy to pick up so it doesn't have to be real low to the ground. Even with this Lincoln cart here, it's not low to the ground. But if you're running the great big tanks, you want it real low to the ground where you can get them on there easy. Yeah, I stuck this threaded rod through here just to line everything up right because I don't have the right piece that's going to go through there yet. And I'm going to tack weld this together, then I'm going to take it in the other garage and stick it in the sandblast cabinet. Yeah, it looks a little bit better now. Now I can finish welding this. Yeah, I welded the inside and the outside. The top, I have to grind a groove in it before I can weld that because I have to grind that flat because the plate's going to be welded to the top of this. And the bottom, I'm not going to weld for now because I want it to sit flat on the table until after I weld the other half on here. Yeah, this is how much I got done. I ha already had this 5 8 round bar and, so and up something else, and I cut it out of there because I'm going to throw the other project away. Yeah, I made this stand for a chop saw a long time ago, but before I bought the Scotchman, I'm going to cut this up and use it for metal. Yeah, I don't quite have enough stuff to uh, finish the, the bottom of this frame. 
but I can drill a hole in the axle for the cotter keys and I can make two of the pieces and I can also make the piece that goes where the tanks go on here. Yeah, and when you drill this hole for the axle, you want it to be pretty tight with the bearings here. If you don't do that, the bearing can slide out part of the way. Yeah, and these two pieces I just cut, they'll go like that, but I don't have the other two pieces to make this piece yet. But there's a local uh, welding shop, and he'll sell me uh, short pieces of this uh, two-inch square tube. Because the regular steel supply place, I gotta buy at least 20 feet. Yeah, here's my sandblast cabinet. I, I made a video on this a long time ago. Yeah, I just started cutting this card up. Part of this top piece will be where the tanks go on. I'm going to cut that up. Yeah, I got this piece cut out. And this is quarter inch plate. This is what the tanks will sit on. And I have to cut this area out next. Because this is going to actually go, be welded down right on top of that. Yeah, and this is how this piece will go on there. I got it all cut out right. And it goes on last. And there's going to be some pieces... Uh, or go around the tank too. I guess I'll cut those out because I don't have the other two pieces yet to finish the hut. Yeah, I'm just starting to make the pieces that are going to go around this where the tanks are actually go down in it. Yeah, so this is what it's going to look like. I just got to make one more piece for this side and there'll be one down the middle. Yeah, I welded this piece in here. This piece is 3 8 thick. I already had this piece cut and it was the right height and everything. And I partially welded this hole up because it was off center. Those two holes were already in this plate before I started this. And I'm not going to... Everything's just tack welded together right now. After I weld it to this bottom piece, then I'll, I'll weld it much better so it doesn't warp. Yeah, so the top part of this welder has to be built a little longer than the actual welder because you've got the power cord here and the gas hose. There has to be enough room to clear those tanks so it's not pushed up against it. Yeah, and this piece is 25 inches long by 12 and a half. And the piece that the welder will be mounted on will be the same uh, dimensions. And I have to grind a groove here on the front top and bottom because I have to grind that flat after I weld it. Yeah, I got it all welded. Now I'll just grind this flat on both sides and then uh, I can weld it to the other piece. So then these two pieces are going to get welded together like this. And that's why you want it flat on the bottom. Yeah, so now I'm ready just to weld all this stuff. Which is quite a bit here. I even put a couple little uh, gussets in here which it probably doesn't need. Yeah, now I fully welded everything. Now I think I'll finish welding the top piece and then put that on next. And I just went and ordered some better wheels for the rear from McMaster Car. The ones I ordered can take 1,400 pounds a piece. Yeah, I don't really care for those wheels. Uh, the front casters, I'm going to leave the same because there's not very much weight on those. And they were only about $25 a piece for the better wheels. And most of the stuff I build, I like to put a regular axle with two regular wheels in the rear and then casters in the front. Yeah, it's easier to move around and, it, and it's a lot more stable that way instead of putting four casters on it. Yeah, and the reason I just welded this top part to the cart first before I weld all this together inside, that'll help keep it from getting warped. Yeah, tomorrow I'll start to make the uh, front caster brackets and I'll make the part that goes up here. Yeah, it's going to sit a little bit higher than uh, this welder. And these carts now from Lincoln Electric, they cost over $500.
and there's nothing much to them. Yeah, the one I built is going to be a lot better than that for a lot less money. Yeah, the yellow tank is 120 cubic foot and it measures 7 inches in diameter. The brown tank is 150 and it measures 7.5 inches in diameter. And the bottoms of these tanks are really rounded, so even if you weld the inside of here, it, it's not going to come close to the welds. Yeah, when the yellow tank runs out, I think I'm going to pay the difference and upgrade it to a 150. Yeah, so now I'm going to start building the top part that the welder actually goes on to. And it's going to be made out of 2 inch angle iron that's 3 16 thick. Yeah, one of the nice things about the Scotchman is it, you don't have very many chips when you're done cutting. I've cut a lot of stuff on this and there's not much in here. And I added that screen to it. I made that piece and welded it on and, and put the screen in there so it doesn't get a lot of chips down in the colon. Yeah, if you use one of these DeWalt, those style uh, chop saws, you're going to have chips everywhere. Yeah, and the easiest way to get these two pieces to come out exactly the same size is to clamp the two together and then just tack weld it and then take it off and weld it. Yeah, and I built this roller stand in a previous video. Yeah, so next I'm going to make the wheel, uh, the caster brackets. There's two different ways I can do that. I can do it like this, like this cart where they're underneath like that. But I think I'm going to make it to where it's out uh, here. It needs to be spaced down a quarter of an inch so I can use a quarter inch plate and make a bracket that comes out here. And some little gussets to go on that. Yeah, and how I normally build stuff is I never normally draw anything out. When I just get a clear picture of something in my head, I just start building it. And the only thing I'll actually write down is the different measurements just so I don't get nothing wrong. So I, I don't have any drawings on this. Yeah, and here's what the wheel brackets are going to look like. Yeah, and here's what one of the wheel brackets looks like. Now I just got to do the other one. Yeah, I have both uh, caster brackets done now. Now I need to start making the upright pieces that are going to go in between this. Yeah, I only have enough of the 2 inch angle iron to make two of the upright pieces. But I do have a piece of 2 inch by 3 inch angle iron that's 3 16 thick. I think what I'll do is I'll use that for one side because I'm going to make a door that opens on one side like a cabinet where I can store it because I'm going to get a spool gun and then I can stick it in there. And I also store some of those uh, extra spools of wire that are over here in there. Yeah, and the best way to make sure your measurements are dead on with this is to cut into it a tiny little bit and then remeasure it to make sure you're in the right place. Then if you're off a little bit, you can move it over a tiny little bit. Yeah, now it's starting to look like a welding cart. So next, I think I'll put the, I'm going to put a piece of eighth inch plate on the top for the actual welder to uh, mount to that. Then I'm also going to put a piece of the eighth inch plate in the bottom too, because it's going to be an enclosed like cabinet. Yeah, I just welded the top piece on here, and this is eighth inch plate. And the reason I left this part back here is I'm going to have to weld another piece onto it for the tanks to sit into. And I, I didn't want it to weld it to the top plate, I wanted it to weld it to the actual frame. Yeah, so now I'm going to weld the bottom piece in here, and this is just eighth inch plate. Yeah, I just cut the piece out for the back. And that's uh, 16 gauge. Most of the materials for this card I already had. And the wheels just showed up from McMaster Car. These are definitely a lot better than the Harbor Freight ones. And they were only about $25 a piece. And they got good bearings in them and everything. Yeah, so I got this piece all ready to weld in. And you always want to grind the paint off good around the area where you're going to weld. Or it won't weld very good. 
Yeah, I got the back piece welded in there. I also put a piece of one inch by a three sixteenths thick piece of a flat bar in here to make it stronger. Cause it's only 16 gauge. Yeah, so now I got the front and the rear uh, piece welded in here. Yeah, so now I need to make a door for it. I might also put a shelf in here. Yeah, so now I'm working on a piece that's going to hold the tanks with the chain. And uh, this is quarter inch plate. And how I made this is with the hypertherm circle attachment. And I just use a drill bit. It's better than this pointed thing that it comes with. But it's best if you do this before you cut all the metal up. Because I had to weld a little piece onto it to drill a hole in there to get it at the right spot. Yeah, I got this piece all welded on there that the tanks go into. That's all gusseted it too. Yeah, I took the and put the two uh, chains on here like this, and I also welded this piece a little bit so that it can't come undone. Now there's a couple different ways I can do this. I can put some of these on here. I, I might take a bolt and, and heat it up and bend it and make it different than that. Yeah, and this is what I came up with for hooks. I took a 5 16 grade A bolt, cut the head off, and heated it up and bent it with a torch. And it's also welded on here a little bit so it can't come loose. And it's best if you leave these chains long that it makes it much easier to take it off. Yeah, there's actually pretty good room back here to get to this power cord. It comes out like right in between the two tanks. So I don't even have to put this all the way uh, forward. I think that's about where I'm going to put it. Now I'm going to start making the brackets to put that on there. And you can, you can bolt this on here, but I, I don't want to do that because uh, a lot of times with these small welders, I take it off to use it in, in, on the job sites. And then two of the holes are right in here. The other two, you have to take the cover off and they're on the inside. Yeah, so now I'm starting to make these brackets where the welder is going to sit. And that keeps it from coming off of here. And it's also going to have uh, one of these pieces of rope holding it down like I did on this other one. Then I can take it on and off easy. Yeah, I got those four pieces welded on there. And these two in the front, I rounded the corners good on it to clear those cables so it's not real close. And this was just a scrap piece that was left, laying up, left over. It's inch and a half wide by quarter inch thick. And it worked out perfect for that. So now I'm just going to make some pieces to tie this rope to. And to make this piece for the rope to go to, I just took some 3 8 round bar and heated it up and bent it around a socket. Yeah, I got both of the pieces welded on there for the rope to go to. And I also had to take and cut part of this. I forgot the door was on this side, so there's enough room for it to open. Yeah, and the reason I bent this one out like this is that it clears the door better that way. That's why it's not the same as the other one. So now I'm going to start working on the door to put on here. And I was thinking about putting a shelf in there, but I don't think I'm going to do that because I want to put that spool gun in there and it comes in a plastic case and it's pretty good size. And most of the stuff I'm going to put in here is going to be pretty big anyways. But I do want to make one little area where I can store some a little bag with some tips in there and that's it. And the rest of the stuff will be big stuff in there. There's two different ways I can make that door. I can make a frame out of like one inch square tube and weld 16 gauge onto it. Or I can just make a, a door out of an eighth inch plate. And that's what I'm going to do, which I've already cut it out here. The door will be something like on this welding table that I made a long time ago. Yeah, I just need to get some different hinges first. 
Yeah, I just made this little box, a, a two inch by three inch square uh, rectangular tube. And I'm gonna weld that down in one corner and that's just to put a bag with some of the tips in. Yeah, I just made this area here. That's just so you can sit one of these caps and it doesn't roll around or you can put two of them down there like that. Yeah, I don't have the hinges for the door yet. So now I'm making a piece to hang the gun on. And this is like inch and a half uh, wide by eighth inch thick flat bar. And I use this Harbor Freight uh, ring roller to do that. I first tried to do it on the Swag Off-Road uh, tube roller, but it's, the piece would have to be a lot longer to use this on it. Yeah, I took and added this piece here, and that's for this to uh, weld to. Yeah, so here's what it looks like when the piece is welded on there. Now I'm going to make the one for the other side, which will be completely different. Yeah, and this is how that hanger actually works. But on this other side, I only have this area out here outside where the door goes. So I, I can't do exactly the same thing on this side. And this is going to be for the uh, ground clamp and maybe the power cord will go there. Yeah, so now I'm making the handle out of three quarter inch black pipe. I actually wanted to bend the pipe, but I don't have the right dies to do that. And with a one inch conduit bender, bender I can't bend it, it's just too hard. So I actually cut this and welded it back together in the right angle. Yeah, so now I'm going to actually work on putting the door on this. And I got these type of hinges from McMaster Car. And they only took one day to get those. And with these hinges, you just want to barely tack weld them on and then make sure everything works right before you fully weld this. Yeah, and these are exactly the same kind of hinges I put on my shed, except I put much bigger ones on there. And that's about all there is to putting these on. Just make sure it's straight when you weld that on. Yeah, and this little piece I welded on over by the hinges, what that does is makes it so the door will only come off when it's opened. And you can pull it off these pins. Yeah, so now I'm ready to put the handle and the latch on here. Yeah, and because the door is an eighth of an inch thick, this piece will have to be spaced up an eighth of an inch, which is no big deal to do that. Yeah, so now I got it all finished. What I'm going to do now is take the wheels off, wipe everything down with the acetone, and then I'll paint it and tape some stuff off first. Yeah, and all of my tool related projects I paint with this paint right here that I get at O'Reilly's and it seems to work pretty good. And I also like to take a grease gun with one of these needles on it and you can grease these casters in, in the bearings. It'll, it'll get right in there and do that. Yeah, so this is what it looks like all finished. Yeah, and this is about all that I'm planning on putting in here and the spool gun when I get it. So it's not going to be a lot of stuff inside this cabinet. Yeah, and sitting right next to the welding cart I just built is the, the cart you can buy from Lincoln Electric. These carts now sell for over $500, and the welder sits 20 inches off the ground. I wanted it to sit a little bit higher, so I went 27 inches off the ground. On these small welders, you don't want to go too high off the ground because... Uh, the gun is only 10 feet long and if you're going underneath a car or a trailer it won't reach 
And I built this for about one third of the price and it's built way better. Yeah, normally this cart will only have one tank on it. It's much easier to roll around like that. It's a lot lighter. Pretty soon I'm gonna get an inverter base TIG and I'm gonna buy two tanks for that and I'm gonna get a spool gun. And when I use the spool gun on this, I'll take one tank off of the TIG welder cart temporarily and put it on here just to use the spool gun. And that's why I made this cart for two tanks and not just one.